Hey there, how are you doing? Emma Desi here. I am book coach and fiction writer and in this series we are learning how to write a novel together. We're writing a new story together and this idea came from the fact that I'm starting a new project and I thought what a better way to sort of exemplify to newer writers out there that it's a messy process and it takes a while to figure out your process and even once you've figured out your process there will be little tweaks and differences that come up with every story that you tell. Sometimes you'll find it really easy to write in a linear fashion from chapter one through to 30 or however many chapters you've got. Sometimes you might, um, as I have done in the past, I've started at chapter one, got to about halfway through and then gone, oh my goodness, I don't know how I get to the end because I, I knew what I wanted my ending to be. Um, felt really, really stuck. So took someone's advice, went to the last chapter and then I ended up writing from the last chapter back to the middle point and joined everything up. And um, I never would have thought that would work, but um, it clearly does. And in fact, James Scott Bell, I think, has written a book about that, about writing from from the middle, writing your book from the middle. Um, so I just I've just come back from um, I went to a cafe. I often work in a cafe. Previously, I've um. I've always handwritten my first drafts and I go to, I find it easier to go to a cafe, sit there where I get to be with people, but I don't know anybody. And so I have human contact, but they're not getting in my way or asking me questions um, and dis disturbing me. But equally, I'm out of the house, so I can't use the excuse of the dishes, the ironing, the filing, whatever it might be as an excuse, Netflix, as an excuse not to do my writing. So it takes me out of my head the sort of relaxed headspace and the at-home headspace and clicks me into, okay, this is work mode. Um, I'm in the cafe, I've got my pen and paper, this is work, and I, and I get down to work. And in the past, that's always worked really well for me and I've managed to, Monday to Friday, most of the time, get there and write something. Some days are brilliant, I get 2,500 words done, sometimes more, um, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's like 100 words, but something gets done and by taking myself out of my comfortable home space and into my workspace that has helped helps me make that make that transition that said things are different now because i struggle with migraines i get two migraines a month and um they are uh, postural migraines so if i am writing too much and i i go like this my shoulders come up here everything scrunches up my posture is so bad, I don't hold myself properly. And so this kind of exacerbates the, the headaches that I get. So I'm needing to change things up. Oh, and um, I'm dictating. So I've made the choice to dictate the first draft of my uh, of this project, of this novel before the end. I have done something similar with the previous book. Um, I've channeled my previous book, Follow Me, that is a book that I channeled. I worked with a channeler to help me do that. That's a whole other um, other topic. And I've, I've written a podcast, I've recorded a podcast about that and things. So you can delve into that a little bit more if you're interested. Go and have a, a dig through the podcasts. Um, but I, I need to kind of save my, my body. I'm fed up getting these, uh, these headaches. So I've made the decision to dictate my first draft. So... Any new um, process, any new way of working that you come across, if you're trying something new because what you've been doing in the past just hasn't been working, or like me, you need to change things up just for your health. This is a big move and a big shift, and it takes time to get used to a new way of working. I've spoken to other writers who do dictate. Some of them have taken to it, taken to it like a duck to water. It's been very, very easy and enjoyable. For others, like I think it's going to be for me, it's a slower process. It takes um, it takes more time to get used to thinking differently. One of the things I've always loved about handwriting is that it slows my brain down. It connects the creativity to my hand. And so the ideas that come out, you know, they're ideas that I just don't see coming. They're in the back of my head. They're not here. I don't know that they're going to come out. But having that magic connection between my hands and my head 
facilitates creativity for me. That has just been always been the magic formula for me. It's what I'm most comfortable with and what I really enjoy. Uh, I've also talked about how that's a real meditative state for me. Handwriting, writing my books just allows me to be right in, in the here and now. I'm not worrying about, you know, what I've what I've just done. I'm not worrying about anything that I've said or done in the past. I'm not worrying about all the things that I've got to do in the future. I'm right here in the moment of the chapter, of the scene that I am writing and the people involved in that scene, not worrying about anything else. And for me, that's a that's meditation. That has been a an amazing um addition to my life and really, really helped me. So now I'm having to, you know, shake this up again and I'm nervous about it and I'm there's a bit of me that's very reluctant to it as well. It's resisting that change. I want to do what's familiar. I want to do what I'm comfortable with and what I know works for me. So dictating is ha huh, hard. I'm not going to lie to you, it's hard. And so I've had to think, okay, well, where do I want to do the dictating? Because I'm going to be talking out loud. I'm going to feel a bit of an idiot, perhaps, walking down the streets, talking into my phone. And depending on what's happening in the scene, <laughs> depending on what I'm saying, people might be, hmm, what's she talking about? So I've kind of thought about that and thought, well, I could do that in the house. That would be really easy to do at home. But it's that same old problem of, okay, if I'm at home, I'm in my relaxed frame of mind, um, I'm in a business frame of mind. So, you know, the administrative stuff I do, I do around my business that I do in my office, my coaching calls I do in my office. It's a, it's not for me an atmosphere that puts me into the right mind frame for being creative. So I need to take myself out of the house again. So I don't want to sit in a cafe and do that. Um, I would feel very, very self-conscious and I'd be too busy worrying about what other people are thinking about me to concentrate on the work at hand. And, and that's more important. So I was thinking, what could I do? And we have a graveyard down the road, not far from where I live. There is a Commonwealth graveyard and it's really lovely place to be. You know, it's um, this big open expanse of greenery. There's beautiful trees there. There's lots of birds. There's lots of flowers, obviously, from people visiting graves. It's a very peaceful, very calming, um, really beautiful place to be. So that has that's where I've decided that I'm going to do my writing. Um, it's also quiet. You know, there's not many people around. So I can walk around the graveyard and follow the paths around it, dictating into my phone and, um, and not be worried about other people hearing the crazy things that I'm saying or that I'm making up conversations. So what I can do now is I can walk the kids to school, I can drop them off there and then I can go to to the graveyard and take a walk around there for 15 or 20 minutes. One of the advantages of dictating is that it's quicker. <laughs> it's a lot quicker. So what I can dictate in, say, 15 or 20 minutes would have taken me really an hour to do, maybe longer, depending on the flow of the day, um, would have taken me longer to do if I was writing by hand. So it, uh, today was the first day of me doing that, um, scene one or chapter one. And I, ha I had to mentally t kind of reassure myself and remind myself that this is a first draft. Not only is it a first draft, it's the beginning of a new project. Not only that, I'm using a new technique to write this book, something I'm really unfamiliar with and not comfortable with yet. So I had to give myself all these caveats, remind myself of all these things. And so know that whatever it is that I dictate into this phone, it's not going to be great. It's hopefully not going to be total rubbish, but it's not going to be great and it's going to be just the skeleton of what will become the finished product, of what will become a finished first draft, uh, for a first chapter. So I want you to hear me when I say that, that there's a caveat to all of our first drafts, and that is that they are not going to be good. They are going to be rough. They are the skeleton. They are the basis of what will be. And by the time I get to the end of my um, first draft, this may not even be the first chapter. It might not even be the first scene. I'm a pantser, so I've got an idea of what is the beginning, the middle and the end of my book. 
and because we've worked through Lisa Cron's, um, ch you know, the chapters of her book, Story Genius, I know roughly what's going to be happening in the story, but I don't know that it's going to stay that way because that's one of the beautiful things about being a creative. I don't know what's going to come out of the back of my brain and onto the page at a later date. So I've got to be open to that. So whilst I'm standing there in the graveyard <laughs> with my uh, dictation, you know, my voice app open, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I have no idea what I'm going to write, speak. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what's going to, how this is going to open up. All I know is what's going to happen, roughly what's going to happen in the first scene. What's the basic thing I want to happen in this first scene and why does it need to happen? And I just have to start, even if it's just starting with description. And then when I think back on what I did dictate today, it was a lot of exposition, a lot of description, not a lot of dialogue, not a lot of emotion, not a lot of um, inner thought going on. I'm just needing to get those um those basics down. I just need to get the skeleton down of what that chapter is going to be about. So I've started with description and then just see what comes. And, you know, when I'm lost for words, I hit pause, take a moment to think about the scene, what might happen next, what would my character say in this given situation. Then I get to hit resume and I carry on for the next two or three minutes until I get stuck again. And then I hit pause again just like I would do if I was writing on paper. I would take a moment, take a breath, have a look around the room. What would happen next? What would my character do next? How would they respond? Um, and then carry on. So I have the same, exactly the same fears of not a blank page this time, but a blank voice note and need to think about that. And what am I going to put in this scene? What's what's the main purpose of this scene? Okay, just go for it. What's Let's just see what comes out. This is part of the fun of not knowing what's happening. It's trusting that I do have it in the back of my brain, that it's there. My subconscious is working it all out. And if I just give it the opportunity, the story will tell itself. So I wanted to share that with you because it's, it is hard. It is hard to start that first um, scene and take away the pressure just let it flow, having fun with it. So today's scene was all about kind of setting up. I need something, I want something big that's going to happen to my character um, that's so, that's big enough that it's changed, it's changing her life, that this is the day that everything has to change. She's been living with the problems in her life up until this point. Now she's had this, uh, she's having a car crash. So she's had a car crash and that's a big enough event for her to say, okay, enough is enough. I've got to change something. So in your first scene, what is the thing that happens to your protagonist that makes them go, okay, today's the day. Things have got to change. I can't go on in the same way anymore. Even if they don't know exactly how it's going to change, they don't know what's going to change. They just know something has to. Then we get that opportunity to set the story in motion and find that starting point um what the stakes are why the story starts on the day it does and uh why your character has to do things differently they can't go on the way they were let me know um if you're enjoying the series so far and you haven't subscribed be sure to subscribe to the channel hit the little bell so you get notified when i next post about um let's write a story together and let me know what's happening to your character what is going to change things for them and um, why does your story start on the day that it does. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.